time for the mayo jam Hello and welcome to the Mayo Jam podcast. I'm Shruti Bhola, batch of 1999, and I will be your host for today's episode. Well, perceptions of what a career means shift as generations progress. While stable, singular career with one company holds value for someone, but today's world demands diverse skills to juggle multiple roles. And if multitasking were a person, our today's guest would definitely be one. She is co-founder of Boond Fragrances. She's also an independent filmmaker, executive producer, and writer. In that, in fact, the last film that she co-produced won a national award. And while she's busy being creative in her free time her official career is actually at amazon as a senior manager now if you're as impressed as i am and you've got ton of questions for her let's welcome krati tandon from the batch of 2007 hi krati hello how are you hi shruti <laughs> that was such a kind introduction thank you it makes it easy to be kind when like the kind of profile which is yours see i already know i'm going to divide up the entire chat today in three parts you know because you have these very mm-hmm. distinct three veins of uh, career graphs that are going on so we're going to obviously you know chat yeah. about that but before we begin so what was it like post uh, you know school the moment you stepped out into the real world was it easy for you to adjust where did you go tell me about your graph oh sure so it wasn't that easy completely mm. honestly so my brother and i my brother's also a mayo boy and you'll often hear me talk about him so i'll just name oh, him varun um okay. he's a mayo boy and i'm you know we're one year apart and i right. we basically have done our entire lives in parallel <laughs> so you hear <laughs> about him a lot and in fact a lot of the careers as well you hear about him um right. so we both went to mayo around the same time and uh, he's the one who would always say he wanted to go to st regis bombay i didn't know what i wanted to do he always knew mm. he wanted to be a film director i kind of like everything um right. you know i enjoyed everything i was a pretty decent student you know i was in, involved in a lot of co curriculars back in school and so you know i applied to a whole bunch of colleges i knew i didn't want to go to delhi i just didn't get the right vibe so right. you know i ended up in bombay before him and he said you always stole stole my plan but essentially we've <laughs> grown up you know our, right. our hometown is kanauj uh, uttar okay. pradesh is very sheltered and our parents were always very clear that you know they really didn't want us to go to boarding school but they didn't have an option of better schooling where we were and they sent us to mayo Right. and so we were very sheltered you know uh, in our worlds in kanauj as well as of course in our world in mayo right? right um right. and therefore you know the new experience of being in bombay house hunting uh you know just being a zaverite uh, it was all very eye opening and shocking so the first 6 months were were a bit of a culture shock in many ways um <laughs> and that to zavier was a coed so suddenly going from mayo to a like a coed yeah correct yeah that <laughs> aspect you know honestly it didn't bother me quite as much i do think that the zavier's ratio is quite high in terms of girls to boys i think it's six girls <laughs> to every one boy it's liberal arts so oh. it wasn't that yeah it, it wasn't yeah. necessarily that it was just the structure i think hmm. uh, you know mayo life is really structured in a particular way and then you kind yeah. of you know uh you you know how to choose your priorities and go in a direction of your choosing whatever that may be um right. and i was very focused on my studies and you know excelling at a limited but you know a, a limited set of co curriculars i was very passionate about for example i was very passionate about hindi creative writing right, right. and um you know i always wrote poetry and you know i uh, was very involved in you know the newsletter etc and opened a photography club in school all of that right oh wow and lovely then i reached Yeah, but when we reached, uh, when I reached Bombay, I mean, there were so many other aspects of life, right? Like where to stay yeah. and monsoons and getting to college. And, <laughs> That's you true. Know, I, which yeah. is food, food. Oh my god! <laughs> you know? uh, Just yeah. like how, what times of the day, you know, um, you eat. I think, I think it's a typical journey for a lot of male girls, maybe. So I definitely wasn't alone. Um, and that's you know where. there's so much comfort in the community uh that's because true. you know there are other people sort of going to the experience not only me and i right like people from other boarding schools with similar experiences right i was and just about to add to that because <laughs> that this is literally what you're defining is what happened to me because i came Ooh. to sydenham college bombay right ah. and straight at so i so when you're talking about monsoon and you're talking about food i'm like yes me too me too the same thing happened oh i actually made better friends with wellum girls and uh, yep. you know who were in my college as well 
so i yeah. and and our bonding factor was that we had played one random hockey match together like you know in school yeah, yeah. So, yeah. so stuff That's like enough. that mattered after a while yeah <laughs> so true yeah those things that feel like really big differences you know when you're in school like even just mere boys right like feel yeah. like a different school or wellens or boon and then you're in this other world and everybody suddenly starts feeling much more familiar <laughs> <laughs> yeah exactly. and i think that's what happened it's like what yeah. happened when i moved outside india for a few years you know and then right. suddenly you start seeing similarities with folks from bangladesh sri lanka um, yeah. you know and then you're like yeah it's the indian subcontinent very similar experiences all the desis you know? desis gang all up together <laughs> yeah you you really yeah. Right. yeah it's it's actually that right like yeah. even at the school level so Correct. i think the first few months were a bit of a shock and then i really started enjoying it i enjoyed mm-hmm. it uh, tremendously and you know it totally transformed me uh, that experience yeah. of living on my own um right. it was wonderful yeah so, so then did you have a plan in place as to what you wanted to do like what did you want to do in school by the way like when you were still in senior school like 11 12 what did you want to be in life i wanted to be financially independent <laughs> as mm-hmm. uh, as you know um not no not so romantic that is to say i knew that i wanted to be independent um on my own i didn't have like very um you know lofty goals in terms of how i would get there i just wanted something that would make me independent and then that i, I would have that i think a right. lot of that comes from my family especially my father right um yeah. saying that you know you need to be you know your own person um mm-hmm. and you know the, a lot of belief in me for that i think i also being the elder sister sort of changed that because we went to boarding school relatively early and everybody told me you know you need to look out for varun because you're we very small when we went sweet. to boarding school <laughs> but yeah and you guys i think i think one year apart so hardly like yeah. Yeah, yeah, but but, but when you know yeah but when i was in fifth standard and he joined in fourth standard he used to yeah. come to my knees yeah he was so <laughs> tiny i remember that and i used to feel like so tall and now when i look at nine year olds and i'm like oh my god like that must have been so funny but wow. in my head i was always this responsible elder sister so i think it's, yeah. it's just become you know this narrative in my life so Correct. i knew you know that that's what i wanted um like i said i was good at a lot of things uh, right. in terms of you know subjects but there was no like clear a part I, i thought i was very interested in economics i really enjoyed it and uh, also the other subjects were interesting i knew i didn't want to do engineering at some point until 11th standard right? like <laughs> right. i knew that would not be very honest yeah. um and i you know the part that i was worried about about my 12th standard board exam was actually my math examination because i felt like i was very good at this exam but i wasn't scoring as much you know as i wanted to for my board so i actually studied really really hard for my 12th standard boards to right. the point where i scored 100 on 100 in my exam oh, and wow. my family was like you're a genius at this yeah it was sheer it was sheer hard work i mean it was just there's no other explanation i just wow. worked really really hard okay right. and uh, because you know i thought this wasn't a weak, this was a weak point and then you know i got 100 100 and that's when i found he's like oh my god you should be getting to math and i wasn't uh-huh. necessarily enjoying the subject <laughs> just did really well so there yeah. was this this option where you can choose you know uh, three subjects and then it, it and then pick your uh, you know specialization so as to say uh, for your bsc or right. ba by your third year which is what i did so i chose right. eco math stats and then i liked stats because it was a nice combination of you know applying practical skills and i yeah I thought it was a nice generalist subject to study because I wasn't yet sure what I wanted to do. The one mm-hmm. thing that I feel like you know I'll take credit for that I've done well is I've I've figured out along the way what I don't want to do and I've quit early, right? Mm-hmm. So, and I found my way to hey this is what I like in that way right through exclusion not necessarily knowing, um, exactly what I wanted to do very early. Yeah, on. and I think that's what happened. So I excluded you know like I'm like okay this is what math looks like at bachelors. This is what stats looks like. This is what eco looks like. I think I want to go after stats. I know right. I don't want to do a masters in mm-hmm. stats because I feel like I picked up whatever skills that I need uh, that I think I will be applying later on and therefore. uh you know i think i want to do a job and i want to pick right. up work experience to understand what i like i had i had a job in dee show um as a data analyst and right. i loved the peers that you know i was working with and again it was a new experience of being a professional etc but i knew pretty early on right within 10 months that hey like i looked at my manager and their manager and i said hey hmm. right like i'm seeing the jobs and i'm not sure that's the job that i want to eventually do so right. you know i i quit basically and i moved back to bombay to market research at nielsen 
uh mm-hmm. where the job profile seemed a lot more exciting is actually like the only graduate hire surrounded by statisticians who were phd's um right. and they were constantly surprised by oh my god why have we hired this kid um <laughs> but i <laughs> but my manager kept telling you bring this energy and you can talk to all of these international clients you know um right. and, and that ended up being a big strength there and i picked up mm-hmm. a lot of the you know uh, client management etc then again you know uh, after getting a promotion and then i looked at my manager's job and the manager's job and i'm like I don't think I want that, <laughs> right? Um, <laughs> yeah. And I'm like, okay, what, what do I want? And then I saw people who were doing jobs that were really nice. So essentially, consulting ends up being a job where you're giving, you know, a lot of insights to somebody who's in a position to actually apply those insights. on the field and get direct results whatever that field may be uh, and what i realized what he i actually think i want to be closer to the application mm-hmm. not just the data and you know the analysis part of it and yeah. that's where you know i'm like okay how do i get there i think i need an mba and that's when mm. i applied um to isb and i got in through indian school of business um, wow. that was in 2015 Yeah, right. so that was in 2015, and um, it's been it's been truly incredible. So at ISB, I had this whole journey in 11 months where I thought I wanted to do marketing, mm-hmm. um, or consulting, and then I became really crystal clear I want to become a brand manager. And right. then uh, I was so nervous for my dream job interview that mm-hmm. I totally tanked it. But there were these two or three, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, and sometimes it's such a good thing that dreams don't come true. <laughs> Yeah, because I, now when I look back, I'm like, oh my god! Like I don't think I would have liked that job quite as wow. much because I know a lot of people. But back then, it was you know I was just so nervous. I studied so hard and prepped so much for that interview. And then yeah. I did these two, three other jobs. And there's this Amazon marketing job back in 2015. Amazon was the number three marketplace in India, and right. you know they were oh my god like messing up marketing in a big way in my <laughs> business school student opinion. Okay, right, and I'm like right. oh my god they have so much money they're going in front of an Indian audience right. and pronouncing uh, and speaking an American accent and pronouncing things in a way that no Indian is ever going to understand in an ad. And they say they are mm-hmm. customer obsessed and you know. Um, yeah. And so, you know, I went into this interview thinking, you know, the, they came very early to campus. I went into this interview thinking, this is my backup. I'm too good for this. Um, <laughs> but you know, I'm just going to be honest because my dream job interview is tomorrow, and I'm going to kill that. I didn't, okay. And but what was this, your dream job? Just to have reference, it, my dream job was being a brand manager at Hindustan Unilever. Okay? Ah, okay, got it. And I was really nervous about it, and this is not a job that Unilever typically, uh, you know, recruits for at ISB because these are people with experience, right? right and so right. we worked really hard through the ISB network for the year to even get them to consider students from the year. Okay, right. And so it was a very big deal. Okay, in my head. <laughs> Yeah. And the day before that was the Amazon interview. Like, this is a prep interview, and I'm going to be so honest. And you know, towards the end of the interview, they asked, "Do you have any questions?" I said, "I have so many questions for you. <laughs> you know, yeah. why are you messing up so badly?" <laughs> okay. <laughs> And and it is so much credit to Amazon for the company that it is, right? And I really mean this, right? Like they yeah. were like, you know what? Like that's what we need. Like somebody mm. who calls out, you know, what's wrong and comes to fix it. And they knew those were problems. And I found a lot of them smiling. And I thought, you know, they must have been very amused that a student and is instead of flattering them, uh, you know, telling. And, them and I don't think there's wrong. no way there's no way you would have been that open if you thought that this was your main interview because you knew in your head. I, I would have been. more nervous <laughs> yeah yeah yeah, yeah. This and is, i think this that worked true. fully in your favor that's amazing i think it worked really well frankly uh-huh. in amazon's favor as well because they right. actually did they directly put me on those projects which <laughs> are <laughs> okay and right. and there that's where you know like the amazon journey really began but uh, okay i'll pause here because in parallel there's a filmmaking journey <laughs> okay we'll come to so that we'll really, come to yeah. you know we'll we'll come yeah. to that journey but first okay. i want to because what's what's really wonderful about this particular conversation which is going on right now is that yeah. even without realizing you know because you're talking about your journey there are so many uh, anecdotes packed in this for anyone <laughs> who is just getting out of school who has a fixed idea of a career and how who's just working towards it there are there is there are like pearls of wisdom which you're dropping just through talking about your journey you know another learning that one shouldn't be so fixed on any one goal that one doesn't have a backup plan because sometimes the backup plan becomes your main goal so there are so many other wonderful things that you're talking so within this if like you know on your amazon journey like now you've been with them for 8 years 
right that's right. am i correct yeah yeah so right. like you like you told me that you began with marketing but then you progressed into product management then you went into technical product management and now you're a right. manager and a senior manager so that's did right. you have a particular game plan after joining them that you know because you no. sound like a realist from everything that you've told me so far <laughs> you know you pick very quickly as to okay this is working for me this is not working for me this is what i want from life so okay you're saying you did not have a game plan in place so this progression mm. that happened uh, for yeah. someone who's interested right now could you just break it down very quickly as to what are these different roles and what is required to be in these different roles you know for example Absolutely. how is marketing different from say a product management or technical product management so like just absolutely. very quickly as to what it entails yeah yeah absolutely with it pleasure right if it helps somebody mm -hmm. i'd be very grateful i didn't know any of these things existed some of these careers they all exactly that's why i didn't know their existence <laughs> before i joined right yeah, so when i yeah. joined marketing i joined in a very traditional role and basically I created a campaign that brought down the Amazon India app for 15 seconds. What? Okay, because it became hugely popular. Okay. Oh, wow. And well I done. thought this was in my first six months. Yeah, I, yeah. I, it's debatable whether that's well done or not. But um, <laughs> but essentially, right, I was I was hundred percent sure I'm about to get fired. Okay. Uh -huh. And actually I got called in by Amit Agarwal. Um, and he said, Listen, customers love this. This is amazing. Oh, and I was nice. so relieved. And nice. then essentially, I mean, this is Again, right, like so much credit goes to the team at Amazon India for having this sort of approach. It's not very typical, right? And they said customers right. love this. The reason it's crashed is because our technology can't handle it, right? Our mm. systems can't handle it. We weren't prepared for it. And if we found something, we should double down and go after it. And essentially right. they said, hey, so you're in marketing. We're going to put a product manager and engineers on it so that our systems mm. can handle scale and activities of this kind. And so for a while, I started working with that product manager who then would work with developers. So product management or project product manager's job is essentially to understand what exactly is to be designed in terms of a system, right, from a business perspective, and then to translate that so that engineers can create a system, right, um, that works and serves that purpose, right? right so right. you have to think through every nook and cranny of your system, right? From how many people will be there, what happens if there's an error of one kind versus another, what exactly does business want to do so that, you know, the system serves that purpose. So I started working with the product manager and I realized, hey, like I, I want to create all these beautiful marketing campaigns. And mm -hmm. these are ideas when it comes to marketing, but the actual application and the deep thinking is being done at the product management stage, right? right. And because I was working that closely with the product hmm. manager, I had an opportunity to fully understand, right? Like when they would ask me a question, I would ask you, hey, why are you asking me this question? And I would observe how it would translate, right, hmm. for engineers. And so eventually I uh, took on the product management responsibilities, right? Like at Amazon, and I think it's true for a lot of big tech, it's actually mm -hmm. encouraged that you try out multiple roles and you move within the teams or even right. within the company, right? Yeah. Um, so that's traditional uh, not very unusual um, mm. and therefore I had the opportunity to become product manager by then I was already senior marketing manager and I, you know two to three years in I realized hey like I want to look at new challenges and maybe product management is a good way to go and that's what happened um, right. from there so typically at least at Amazon there are two kinds of product managers product managers with tech background product management no product managers without the tech background is important because you work directly with software engineers if you come from a technical background so you're able to translate you know these two worlds of business and tech right Correct. um yeah. i came from a statistics background i'm not an engineer so i picked up that skill along the way because i saw a lot of value in it and i right. truly genuinely enjoy working with engineers it's, and it's was it easy to pleasure. pick up or did you have to take like a side course or something of that sort to kind of or did you just learn on the job I learned on the job. I learned in context. And I right. think that's what worked well for me. Um, right. I really enjoyed that. I think, again, in this is something I also picked up at ISB, right? Like, I love being in rooms where I'm not the smartest person. I think it's mm -hmm. the greatest learning experience. And Absolutely. I think ISB really opened my yeah. eyes to that. And I think the same thing happened when I'm with engineers. But when in that room, right, like, I realized the value that I'm bringing that's unique to me. So the yeah. value that I was bringing that was unique to me in those conversations was actually not uh, the technical knowledge. It was important for me to know, but was actually like very crystal clear business objectives and understanding of the customer. 
right mm. and that's right. what the engineers really needed from the product manager right mm. so actually the technical know how i mean i was not going to be coding myself right Correct. so there's yeah. no limit to it you can learn as much and i'm still learning right and probably yeah. will be yeah. for a long time we all are as far as tech tech goes yeah. so much and so fast evolving again if you're surrounded by really smart people sometimes one has and i've had this reaction sometimes right where you start questioning yourself i think mm. it's very important to understand hey like why are in the room and what value you're bringing that's unique and that's something i actually learned at isp right? right um and because of that right i was able to bring that skill um into these rooms full of really incredibly smart engineers and they recognize what i was bringing i recognize what they were bringing and i really right. truly enjoy working with them mm-hmm. to this day um then i got a job opportunity in one of the meetings it wasn't really an interview like i was just talking about this program that i'd set up in india and someone offered me a job um mm-hmm. because they were hiring for their team at amazon in berlin uh right. my then boyfriend now husband was in germany so it was something i was thinking about i never really wanted to move out of india right. <laughs> uh you know i wasn't sure but you know for those reasons i was like okay let me take this job and see how it goes i didn't take it for professional reasons but it ended up being incredible for me professionally um wow. and that's a really big boon because and personally clearly year, yeah personally clear of course right? <laughs> like, that was the top yes. priority um yeah. but um but professionally what ended up happening was you know i picked up uh, firstly i worked with an international uh well, colleague set right which is very right. different and i worked on a global customer not only an indian customer and i realized how many things translate what doesn't translate i learned international best practices also personally i learned to live in a country where you know the language is not a language that i know it's german yeah. it's hard to learn how to navigate that entire system right and it brought its own set of challenges but it's also mm-hmm. own sets uh, own set of adventures and yeah. during the pandemic essentially right like my manager grew and they were looking for somebody to manage my team right mm. basically a set of six product managers who were um who were essentially hired to do the job that i moved to berlin to do and right. they picked me they picked to groom me and mm. i essentially was managing my colleagues uh sorry <laughs> overnight <laughs> Yeah. uh and that was interesting right and yeah. that was a very new challenge and essentially when you're a manager the biggest change right um is that you you understand the job but you're not going to be able to do the job you have a lot more breadth you may not have as much depth in the matter and you yeah. have to be able to train and trust your team right mm. to be able to do the job and for you to sort of step back and see the bigger picture and that's the skill that i had to learn and then i picked up and then eventually right. i grew into you know a senior manager role so that's really like a summary of my journey at amazon right. professionally so far yeah wow i'm pretty sure that uh, people who are interested in it and who are kind of still learning uh, they're going to get to learn a lot from this because you have packed like a huge punch in the whole mix bowl <laughs> that you just spoke about which is phenomenal so yeah, everyone but having said that you know fellow mayoites who are starting out on their career paths what That's bubbles would you like to burst for them who are especially interested in marketing and product management and the kind of career graph that you've had so if say they're finding it super fascinating listening to you and they're like wow this is what yeah. we need to do please burst their bubble for them so that they're prepared in reality as to how things go down just do don't think too much don't plan too much do observe your own reaction see what you're good at what you're enjoying where you're bringing value and then go after it quit very early there is no shame in fact there is only good things in knowing what you don't enjoy and what you don't do that is what i would say the second thing and the final thing really is take a lot of pride in your work it doesn't matter if nobody is going to be watching or reading what you're writing for example at amazon we write a lot um mm. take a lot of pride in the quality of your work it will pay you off it will pay off eventually it may not be at this cycle it may not be from your manager but good work is always appreciated in the longer term in any capacity and in any industry that i have been exposed to right. yeah like if it's a product at amazon even if two customers are using it and they love your product like there is value in that um mm. if if you know it's a it's a film it's very heartfelt or it's a small business very heartfelt and you're making your product you know with a lot of love and insisting yeah. on high standards of quality it will get appreciated right mm-hmm. um it's not always about scale i mean the scale mm. will come the appreciation will come but focus on the very very high quality work phenomenal 
Phenomenal. And this is, I think, an excellent segue now to get into your film side of the journey as a producer. And currently, in fact, there is a film which is in the post-production stage, which you're currently working right. on. Right? right. And that, like you mentioned, that uh, it's with your brother, with Varun, that you're working on that. That's right. Now I need to know, how did you get into the whole film production side of things? <laughs> like you're so busy, I would assume, you know, with your career, with all the work that's going on, with everything on top of it, your personal life is also taking off. While all this is going on, how did you manage to find time to suddenly get into, you know, producing films? So if you think I'm busy, you should genuinely meet a father. He is the master multitasker. He doesn't understand <laughs> why people think we are busy. So <laughs> I don't know. It's all a matter of context. But right. as far as films go, so I, you know, uh, Varun, our father is a poet. He okay. writes in the poetry. He's a businessman. And I, you know, picked up that love from him. And throughout school, I, I wrote. And I never imagined that that would be something, I, anything creative would be something I would do professionally because I just couldn't imagine how one would make their career out of this, right? And I wanted that stability and financial independence much earlier on, right? right. Uh, Varun was always very clear that he wants to be a film director, right? Mm. And he went to Xavier's knowing that that's what he wants to do. And he found like-minded people in his course and essentially started making short films and in his three years the crew made 15 short films already wow you know, they were already yeah. traveling film festivals right so just picked up a camera and started making films and you know just understanding the craft and um trying to figure out what's the way to tell story obviously not all of them are great some are good some aren't but when you're doing that you need people who want to tell you stories you need people who can organize things you need people who can market things right and i right. looked at these boys and i'm like oh my god you guys need my help <laughs> yes, so disorganized. I'm here. I'll so, help you. Uh, yeah, so this is the elder sister speaking me, and I'm like, oh my god, there are much better stories than this, you know. And then I would give them a story. Oh, <laughs> wonderful. Nice. <laughs> okay. And huh. I think Mayo does that a lot as well. Honestly, it fosters uh, a lot of multitasking, right? Like in the yeah. same day, you're going from sports to some activity to studying to homework to you know. And okay, so right. it wasn't very unusual for me to do two things, you know. Right. Definitely. So right. um. I mean, that's how I got involved and I stayed involved, right? Um, right. In parallel, so while I was at ISP, so we kept making these movies and, you know, all of these guys, right? Like the so four member crew, right? Wanted to do mm. films full time and basically went on to get uh, more education and make more in that field, right? right, um, right. So for example, like, uh, our director of photography, right? He went to Spain to study and then he came back and he's now working with Tiger Baby Films, you know, wow. second unit um, yeah. camera. Editor, same thing, right? He went and studied that, you know, uh, same thing with most of mm. our crew. I mean, for Varun, he took on more commission work, um, right? Which was more uh, commercial, not necessarily independent, right? To do it more professionally. But we always wanted to make, you know, our own independent films in parallel. So right. we had a script. So Varun and I actually worked on a feature film script that was entirely a musical. And mm -hmm. we spent two years, right? Um, writing 90 pages in verse, right? Mm -hmm. So Varun would show up at my house in Bombay. And I would have been very tired from working. He would insist I write, like, you know, this dialogue in words and so yeah. we did that and I was interested in the film but we somehow knew you know that it wasn't working and we put two years I feel of our lives into that script hmm. you know that's what we were working on hmm. and uh, something wasn't working you know in our gut we knew it wasn't right and we almost right. wanted to shelve it but Varun submitted it to Film Bazaar and basically a script lab Mm -hmm. uh, where basically films get selected from throughout the world for mentoring by you know one of the industry experts Correct, and yeah. our script got selected and wow our, and our yeah we were, that's phenomenal yeah so just when we were about to shelve it you know so tiny mm. <laughs> and mm. um our mentor was actually Ritesh Batra who is the director mm. of Lunchbox right. okay so you couldn't have asked for a better mentor and this program works in the scope of one year where every few months you go visit your mentor and spend two weeks with them in some location in India Okay. Uh, and you talk about scripts and so, so Varun did that right so in parallel mm. I am applying for business school I'm studying really hard you know I'm working on uh, my interviews all of that right and Varun when mm. he did that he would come back and he would have these long sessions about what we learned and basically by the end of that session and that year we realized hey like we're not sure the best learning was actually to not do that project I think if we had done that project um, it would have been a very different career trajectory for the both of us but we decided not to do that project because we felt okay now we realize the kind of films that you want to make right and this is not that right now 
right mm. and so mm. then varun you know took to himself and basically wrote a story it was a beautiful story with very little feedback by back then i was a student in isp right he sent it to me mm. very little feedback we had already finalized coincidentally one of the films we made uh, back in zavias uh, suddenly went viral on youtube okay oh. like some, it was a film we made 4 years back while i was a student there okay right. and um, it was basically uh, hosted by another channel that mm-hmm. we didn't know of not necessarily with our permissions um, oh. and then someone <laughs> sent us the link and it uh. had over a million views okay oh, and wow. back when we were students youtube wasn't yeah. that big Correct. okay so when we would put it you know then we would put it on facebook we would ask everybody yeah. to watch our film right yeah. and then we thought that was it you know you'd get like 100 2000 and that was really great because you're like you count the people you know i count the people i know and you know <laughs> multiply <laughs> by 3 that's our <laughs> and when we were in, uh, you know and when this film when i not only did it go viral varun got invited to a show at ndtv prime time where they where nagesh kukunur um, the director was interviewing young and upcoming filmmakers and because of that film you know varun got invited to that show and because i was in business school i mean i knew that we had mm. the script and you know um uh, i wanted to talk about it and my peers were very interested i set up you know a special session where students uh, you know my fellow students could come in and we would do, do a viewing of the interview of the film and they could talk to me about the business of making films right. and uh, during that session you know um i ended up getting crowd funding for our next film sahi that's right? crazy so, that's absolutely yeah. crazy i'm loving so the I, way I, things are <laughs> happening <laughs> yeah so i pitched I mean, I basically pitched, and I used all the business school skills that I was learning right then and there. You know, on right. and and I mean, it was so incredible. Obviously, we it was crowdfunding, so we didn't take like really big amounts from you know um anybody. We were like, hey, give an amount you won't miss. You're going to get producer credit. Uh, yeah. you're going to have a film that's going to travel the world, right? And obviously, mm. right? Like I knew being a student myself, your resume building at that point, right? And you're looking for points that are differentiator in your resume for your placement yeah. season. at right. isb and i knew this could be really cool for a lot of people right yes. and we would get a film made <laughs> yeah <laughs> and therefore yeah. you know um, uh, we made sahi in the hills mm. when i was graduating just before i joined amazon you know uh, we completed the shoot and you know we had the film we submitted film festivals and we just waited to hear back and for a while there was just silence and you know uh, it was okay and one day we got a you know varun was actually on youtube and he saw mm-hmm. a masthead of national award announcements and he just mm-hmm. opened it because you know out of curiosity you're from the industry you want to see what wins and then yeah, we saw of course varun tandon special <gasps> mention for direction for yeah he and we were like this has got to be a joke and he called me i was in an amazon office you know imagine this big corporate office everybody sitting at their desk typing pain <laughs> drop silence <laughs> and he calls me and i'm like and you know my first reaction oh my god i'm so typical my first reaction is you've made a mistake like me check <laughs> <laughs> you don't know better i, I know i will check <laughs> i will check because this, yeah. this i mean i i don't want to have this reaction correctly and what they do is they really? announce on tv and then the official release list is released at 4 pm in writing So I right. told him, "Don't you dare tell any tell anybody. We are going to wait for it in writing. Like, what if there's yeah. a mistake? What if there's another film?" Mm. <laughs> False. That's Ali, but unbelievable. That's it really unbelievable. Was. Wow. And and for a while we didn't hear from anybody, so we thought we made this film for ourselves, and we are very happy about it. And you know, right. Um, right. Nobody else is going to watch it, and that's totally okay. And uh, then after that, we suddenly started hearing back from all of these film festivals who we submitted to all over mm. the world. um hmm. saying they love the film completely independent of the national award right like it just takes a lot of them a lot of time to get back so yeah. varun traveled the world uh mm-hmm. with the film that was truly truly incredible i had the responsibility after that uh you know circuit was done to ensure that you know a film gets a release ott wasn't a thing in india okay right? yeah. then yeah. and so i worked really 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 hard to try and find contacts in the right places Yeah. uh where we could try and get it visibility because we thought it would be very unfair to have this film yeah, and you know really. not have an audience for it today True. of course right like we found the right youtube channel today our film is on um everything like apple tv sony lives youtube wow. <laughs> we we often find ourselves finding our films in different places in banners on ott <laughs> so it's a different That's, world now but this is uh, it's phenomenal and also the kind of uh, the kind of way that you're talking about how things are happening uh, uh, it's it's quite crazy because you know it's so easy for anyone to say okay yes there's a lot happening but life has a huge role to play in the way things are manifesting around you so when we take stock of it it sounds Like oh wow everything's going your way 
right but uh, but yeah. in the moment what do you think is what works for you that all these opportunities are happening and you're saying yes to them and they move forward because it's very easy for people mm-hmm. i've seen especially in the you know in the film business and people who are producers and directors uh, writers even it's very easy for people to get demotivated and kind of give up like how yeah. you said you guys were just yeah. about giving up when you know it actually went through so uh, what mm-hmm. and and another thing i'm gathering from your experiences you kind of keep giving it a shot you don't wait around uh, you know thinking too much about it yeah. you give it a shot and see okay hua to hua nahi hua to okay dekhi jayegi like you know that's one uh, mm-hmm. manner in which you're moving forward but what would you like to specially share with the people who tend to get a little disappointed and kind of you know hold themselves back i think a film specifically it doesn't do us any favors in our experience when we work towards something like an award or something right. like hey being in so many otts i think and i really truly believe this across all different you know jobs that i've done uh i think if there is an element of honesty in the work mm-hmm. that you put out then in that moment it is about that honesty and doing it and knowing that it's really interesting it's fun it's honest it's good um yeah. and just doing that and making peace with the fact that that's what you did it for even if it is two people who see something or um you know uh, three people who buy a product right it's mm-hmm. okay right and that's mm-hmm. not easy to do right because yeah. sometimes there are serious financial implications for certain things but um i those are sacrifices we have made right so right, uh, right. along the way so um but it's really like it's about putting work that is very honest and recognizing other people who are doing that work you know or who are eager to do the work uh, that's mm-hmm. really honest and exciting and then you know mm-hmm. sort of grouping get together with them and building a team because um unlike writing which you know you can do mm-hmm. alone filmmaking is a team sport right there is Correct. no way that any of us will say hey one person uh did this it's a team sport so getting together with like minded people and you know ensuring you know that you have that right spirit and you're doing it for the right reasons um right. is what it is so we never worked towards any of this right we were just mm-hmm. trying to make an honest film after you know the previous film which we felt you know wasn't quite as honest and we were trying to perhaps optimize for other things you know like maybe right. this is something that you know some producer would pick up right like mm-hmm. those kind of mm-hmm. things i feel like it shows mm-hmm. in the work um yeah. honestly yeah. even in business i've seen that right like when a mm-hmm. business is trying to do something um with this purpose that they think is very hidden <laughs> right mm-hmm. and not directly mm-hmm. straight to the customer customers can always tell right yeah, um and then true. there's a very like you know honest uh purpose behind a business or a work of art or a piece of work right mm-hmm. um even if it's two people even if it's mm-hmm. one person uh who's how, who's in a position to you know observe it and react right. to it um it will be you know they will be able to tell that there is authenticity here right and yeah. that's in- that's my learning right so it's really intention like, is important intention, intention it's very important. clear yeah. yeah 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 also in that moment it in that moment you know like keep your intention front and center and enjoy that right mm-hmm. so and i think that's mm-hmm. what holds us in good stead so for example if we have a film and you know right now somebody asked me if you have a film in post production right like beyond mm-hmm. a certain point i can't guarantee certain things right like right. Uh, where it will travel what it will do but i but i can guarantee that it's a film that we'll be happy with because without it we won't finish it the script we worked right. really hard for and we are very mm-hmm. proud of and if you are part of the crew of the film it's a film that you will be very ha- happy having in your imdb credit or you know mm-hmm. you'll be very happy saying i produced that right if you right, were ever in right. position to do that and that's what we can make the rest is not in our control anyway so no point correct. trying to control it you know correct, and correct. don't spend too much time thinking honestly beyond that like what i like doing is just doing you know after a particular mm. point in time the overthinking the planning it doesn't help there are bigger things that you need to plan mm. for and then there are lots of things you need to just do and then you right. learn you know right So so the new film which is about which is in the post production right now by when uh, uh, by when will it be completed and by when will it be out any idea yes As by the right end now? of the year by the end of the year okay. hopefully uh, in terms of release i don't know when it will be available widely right. but we right. will definitely lock it down we are actually currently crowdfunding uh while mm-hmm. 
parallelly editing for some aspects of the post production that's also touch wood going well but it's right. depending on the status of all of those things hopefully we plan to lock uh, the film by september and then mm-hmm. you know start doing the film festivals etc and then go towards release so it's going to be a winter thing hopefully and when it does release i'm hoping that uh, i i can get varun this time around yeah. back on the podcast he and discuss as a mayo boy yeah I, we would love <laughs> it on the mayo podcast to yes. have a detailed discussion about his life and his story yes. and everything but yes. but right now circling back to you now the yeah. other aspect of your side before we get into it which is boon fragrances uh yeah. before we get into it i have to ask you does it ever mm. get super exhausting while you're working on different things have you ever wondered what have i gotten myself into why am i juggling so many things what am i doing with my life do you ever come to that point i feel like until i had two things right mm-hmm. uh films and something else i didn't feel yeah. that at all right. honestly we started boon and i'll tell you why and how we started boon right uh we did not realize what it would become and it is a source of perpetual joy and wonder to us <laughs> that it has become <laughs> what it has become <laughs> Right. and we feel right. so much love for it and we really mm-hmm. want to do justice and when it is these three things you know mm-hmm. then mm-hmm. it's not all that easy to juggle um yeah. because you know every job every work has its ebbs and flows so if a film is in shoot that's like i can't do anything else in that time same thing for right. amazon there are certain times of the year where you know it's going to take up many many hours of the day many more than i probably would have wanted but then there are other yeah. times when you know it's much cooler it's the same thing for films right like there are times when you're just waiting to hear back right and it's mm-hmm. a little bit uh, quieter right um mm-hmm. with a business that doesn't always happen mm-hmm. there aren't always quiet times um mm-hmm. you know there's always something uh, going hopefully <laughs> for the business mm-hmm. like there's always things brewing um correct and then of course you know there are these times when any business is busy right like your diwali for us a wedding season yeah. as well that comes at end of every year in india is particularly Correct. busy right hmm. um hmm. and so that's the reason it's hard because i typically try not to you know take two peaks that simultaneously if i can help it so i'll not write a script while also doing something else for one of the other businesses that requires as much deep thinking um yeah. but with the business that's very hard to control because you can't determine you know uh, like you can say for example in a film that you know you're making yourself right. uh, what are right. the timings to be so it's been tricky with three things mm-hmm. but mm-hmm. Uh, i am able to manage because the good thing is that with amazon you know i have eight years of experience and i've, I've built this team um right. of incredible people and i'm able to provide the support and mentorship and i honestly have like a, a wonderful team based out of your who really prioritize work life balance which means that i mm-hmm. do get you know sufficient time to do all of the other things correct correct that's wonderful so now let's talk about boond fragrances i went and i checked out the website as well boondfragrances.com and the origin story is very interesting so tell me about how you guys decided and what was the main idea behind starting i mean you could have done any business you know you could have right. under the sun any th- so why particularly perfumes and why boond tell me about it yeah so kanauj is famous for its perfumery especially others and they've mm. been Uh, made there using this traditional um very manual labor intensive method uh by artisans uh, and the method is called dek bhapka okay and it is okay. gi tagged to kanauj right um mm. now a couple of things sort of fell into place for boon to happen uh the first of which was hey as we were growing up firstly because we stayed away from home from a very young age we spent a lot of time especially when we were younger both varun and i counting days for summer vacations counting days for diwali yeah. you know we always <laughs> yeah. romanticized home right uh, i think yeah. that happens yeah. when you tend to stay away and then the further away you move you know when i was living in europe even more um the second mm. thing that happened was um as we were coming back home right like we grew up around perfumes and perfumeries we traveled we realized wow this is actually hmm. unique to our city everybody doesn't grow up around perfumers and perfumery you know <laughs> that's and, true yeah and yeah. then the further away we move the more we realize how unique it is you know right. and um and we would come back and we would realize that you know more and more perfumers uh were taking on other businesses because the industry was suffering and hmm. uh, a lot of the younger generation of uh, folks in those family businesses weren't coming back right because it didn't mm. see the potential because these fragrances these are natural fragrances you know um right. that 
were not able to compete as effectively in terms of marketing and pricing and quality mm-hmm. right um mm. after 90s liberalization when you know all perfumes from all over the world became available to indians and right. um, they spent a lot of those international brands would spend a lot on marketing like how could your you know humble khas and gulabi compare with you know your chanel um yeah. and to get it to demand the price that the pure fragrance demands right like you require a certain kind of branding and that know how and industry it just wasn't there um honestly Correct. in the case and so the industry is primarily supported for a long period of time with exports to the middle east and other parts of the world and the business basically transformed right to the point where when varun and i would travel even our mayo mm. friends right um and everybody else uh they had never heard about other they never heard about kanoj they not heard about dev bhapka they if they had ever experienced a pure fragrance right you know it would be in some dusty shop in polaba causeway or old delhi or you know charmar right yeah but then yeah. you know it would have given them a headache they would have bought it for 100 rupees you know because obviously if you're trying yeah. to compete so the natural tendency of you know a lot of the businesses was that they would start competing on price point to make this cheaper and that essentially led to a lot of dilution of the pure product so at most hmm. if a lot of the people of millennial or younger generations were either not exposed to this at all or had hmm. bad experiences which was even worse right yeah. and we were yeah. constantly vocally you know as people from kanauj who had this experience talking about hey this is not how it is and uh, you know there's a fragrance called marty which is the fragrance of the first strain that it's actually captured and it's not a technique hmm. that's new it's thousand it's literally a thousand year old technique yeah right. and people wow. didn't try to get it and we realized you know over the years when we would go and people would ask us to bring and we would try and bring something pure or even for ourselves we wouldn't get it right up the right. third thing that right. happened was the lockdown so i spent you know a long berlin winter in the uh, lockdowns and i was just really homesick uh varun oh. had moved from bombay uh, to kanauj for the lockdowns and right. i in 2021 uh, they were uh, poli came hmm. to kanauj thinking i'm going to spend 3 weeks here and i ended up stuck there for 3 to 4 months because of the worst of the pandemic uh, which was yeah. the wave of the pandemic and we saw i mean firstly it there was bad news everywhere it was a horrible time for the country it really? was very difficult and we were yeah. in kanauj and we saw first hand a lot of the struggles right mm-hmm. um of kanauj and of the artisans and of the perfume industry really affected us and as filmmakers you know we always hope that one day we'd go back and it was supposed to be when we were much older um you know yeah. we would go back and you know tell the story of our hometown and you know we just started doing it so honestly i didn't use any business skill anything in any of this mm. we just wanted to tell the story we took to our cameras you know we um we just started an instagram page that's all that's all mm. that was it wasn't uh, it was just really hard felt it goes back to you know what we were just talking about about being yeah. really honest in the work yeah. and the mission that's really what it was you know we saw it and we were like okay we're going to start this and when we started it you know our family members started messaging saying you didn't tell us you're starting this big thing and you're not big <laughs> it's just a, it's just a yeah. page you know and um, yeah I mean, imagine, okay, Shudhiri. Like, I this is yeah. not a very rational decision in hindsight, but I didn't know what I was getting into. It's the year I'm getting married. I'm being put up yeah. for a really big promotion at Amazon. We are about to go into <laughs> shoot for a film. Will I have started a business? <laughs> Listen, now talking to you for the past hour, I can I can tell you this hundred percent that yes, this is the r- rhythm of your life. This is how you function, and I think that this is very apt. Uh, I mean, if this would not have happened, I would have expected like, "Arey, kuch garbad ho gayi hai." So this is very much you. <laughs> so I expected. Okay, now. well, that's 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 a good perspective. <laughs> But anyway, so But yeah, now. so we were like, you know, okay, like fine. What if somebody wants to buy this product? You know. So the thing is, because yeah. Varun and I often times carry it, and I wanted to carry it with myself back to Europe, etc. We had some, you know, uh, pure fragrance made. ourselves right which would curate mm. like you know we hired an artisan sort of uh, uh, on an hourly basis and just you know we had something ready and we worked really hard on the whole thing and you were like okay right. people really want you know something and you know say hmm, you know let's put a number 50 people reach out in the course of a year okay yeah. and yeah. um what would we do so we said okay like i know just a small place right so next to our house is this uh, you know a shop which has everything you know prints xerox 
aadhar card phone number linking everything okay so we were yeah, like ha yeah. okay you know my uncle next door we he yeah. couriers also so some yeah. unknown courier so he'll send the courier so you know the stuck classic he has this you know parcha he would make manually write your nap, everything you know and correct yeah so, we were like it's fine see we are anyways a varun you are not back going to be back in bombay i'm going to be back in berlin and you know uh like this much to papa can do you know papa mummy they'll say my parents are also by the way we are very much a team in a lot of our projects so they are very involved in a lot of our projects so you know That's papa wonderful. and then we were like you know our fragrances are um, so we going this this comes as a piece of our heart so um mm-hmm. and for example each fragrance will be paired with a, a poem okay written by us hmm, right wow so, papa yeah. wrote this poem so a lot of personalization ha ah, oh, he wow. hand wrote he hand wrote each poem okay then we were like there right. should also be a note in english explaining the fragrance the best writing right. hand writing in our family's mummy so mummy is going to hand write so each of the fragrance <laughs> bottles is going to be in this uh, you know uh, cloth pouch and we need people yeah. to stitch so you know the local aunties who make our blouses salwar suit and all like we hired them the housewives you know who do who pick up a little Correct. bit of work right so we yeah, like okay yeah. we we'll, you know we'll do that and we hmm. we started this thing and i mean we crossed that number and far more than that number in our first day so our second what? day was yeah so we were like uh okay. <laughs> now what <laughs> so so no now i'll tell you we went and manually got that entire booklet from the guy next door and people are messaging where is my order and i'm flipping manually you know through pages trying to figure oh, out oh no matching. and that's where i'm like oh my god i need tech and that's when you know sort yeah. of the amazon gear tech you know checked in and I mean, India has really great infrastructure for a lot of digitization, it, it, it so that does. really helped us. Um, yeah, but it was nuts for a while, and I think for a long time we just thought this hmm. is just some sort of you know trend, and people are going to look the other way. But हम तो हम कर्म करेंगे. ठीक है hmm. तो हम यू नो विल पुटा विल कीप डूइंग इट एंड वी विल डू इट फॉर द लव एंड एज लॉन्ग एज वी आर डूइंग इट हम खुश हैं अब बाकी कोई yeah. देखे ना देखे यू नो इट्स फाइन एंड दैट इज एन ओके एटीट्यूड टू हैव अंटिल यू हैव एम्प्लॉय सो वी एक्चुअली डीलेड पुटिंग नो हायरिंग एनीबॉडी फॉर अ लॉन्ग टाइम थिंकिंग कि अगर हायर किया और ये ट्रेंड निकला हमें फायर करना पड़ेगा वी डोंट टू डू दैट यू नो दैट विल ब्रेक अ हार्ट सो हम सबसे ये बोलेंगे कि यू नो टेम्पररी अभी आप अभी आप थोड़े हजार और बना लो बॉक्सेस अभी बट एक बार के लिए यू नो लाइक वी वुड नॉट Commit to scale because we were very nervous for a while, um, and then it, it we were really stretched to the maximum. Okay, mm. at some point, you know, uh, just before Diwali that year, and we were like, okay, if we want to do anything else with our lives, <laughs> like mm. anything, else, <laughs> we need to hire, and that comes with a lot of responsibility. right so Correct. yeah i mean that changed a lot of things and then yeah uh, then you can't hide away then now you know it's a legit business and now you need to legit, be serious yeah about then it. you need to yeah. like and and that's a very big deal because the the mission really is to support the artisans and to revive this craft and to take indian fragrances to the world right and there's a lot of education involved and should they like look at our challenges right um you're selling hmm. fragrance in lockdown basically basically that means that there are no physical interactions with your product okay yeah. so you are basically yeah. telling the story visually and trying mm. to explain to somebody what this smells like without actually giving them the opportunity to smell yeah, that's really right? tough i didn't even think of yes. that before right now when you pointed it out yes yeah. you're right yeah so that's, if we were really starting tough. it as a business you no know, i said it jokingly yeah. but if we were starting as a business we would have waited and done things a lot differently like Correct. you know if i put i put on a b school hat there would have been a leg there would have been you know but there was none of that and 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 I think the the other thing that happened during lockdowns were a lot of people started doing a lot more online shopping and there was a lot more trust in small businesses, which in That's hindsight true. you know made sense for us. So, but we used our visual storytelling, right? And that really mm. helped us, right? And we yeah, realized yeah. it along the way that that was helping, you know, like visually you have to give the experience of this fragrance. And the right. wonderful thing was that actually our fragrances are very familiar because. as far as we know we are the only brand trying to create fragrances that are indian right so mm. genda is only present in india and yet you will not find it in in too many perfume bottles for example right. because right. you know we're using brands that uh, and fragrances that are conceptualized elsewhere so you will find lilies and lavenders right um, yeah. and you will not yeah. find our, our you know uh, motia you will not find our genda right um, in our fragrance right. bottles and it, this is really you know like a homage to all of all of that right it is indian wow. perfume and indian fragrances and right. um that's really what we came about so it was just so much fun and it was so hmm. interesting and things are perpetually exciting and we are 
or even now even with employees and the scale and two years into that business uh you right. know we are wide eyed with wonder as to all of the things happening <laughs> we don't want to lose that you know because then everything that happens is positive only yeah. like what is really we, yeah. okay, we didn't expect this and so many yeah. wonderful things have happened you know you won't believe yeah. the kind yeah. of response we've seen we were part of wiki katrina uh wedding we didn't expect oh that. wow very yeah, yeah. cool Yeah. yeah and we found out with the rest of the world where you know so celeb- like so we were part of the wedding favors and you know celebrities started posting pictures on the instagram thanking uh you know right. um both of them and somebody from the film industry who we happen to know got one of those packages sent us a voice note saying why didn't Ooh. you tell me <laughs> uh an incredible <laughs> thing like natio yeah. was in kanauj two months back shooting right. for both right. uh, you know we've had like incredible press incredible support honestly from our customers and i mean i do want to call out the mayo community in all of this right like our first set of orders so many mm. mayoites you know wow. came up and just order it was truly incredible it was really special yeah to see the support of the community um it was truly special wow all in all you know as i'm listening to your story and i feel like th- it's just been about you know less than an hour since we're chatting but <laughs> to me i almost feel like we've never met but i yeah. almost feel like i know you i know you inside out and it's all because of the kind of lives we've led which is mayo centric and our yeah. roots are in the same place right This so now yeah so now overall in your life if you had to package all of it and right now i would in one sense say that while you have so much life experience in the true sense of it life is just about beginning you know there is so yeah. much yet that you have to kind of achieve and you have to go forward and like there's so much to win so as to say mm-hmm. so what is the one thing that you want from your life is there like in say 10 years time or 20 years time is there a vision that you have for yourself which you want to achieve which is, has to be a personal goal i'm not talking about work wise i'm not talking about as a person where do you see yourself in 20 years i just always want to have a sense of purpose and to be fulfilled by it i think it mm. it really defines me it may be anything right, right? uh personal professional anything but i i right. i know this that i always want to be inspired by a purpose and mm-hmm. i think if i do that the rest whether it is me being happy you know my personal life everything is going to fall into place because that's what's happened you know i am yeah. at my best when i have that when i am inspired and have a sense of purpose and i'm working towards it just listening to you talking about it is inspiring me so i hope that you always are inspired <laughs> by your you. purpose and oh, you continue you. to inspire everyone who listens to your story every person that you talk to and your vivacious energy it it is absolutely contagious so i just hope you keep spreading thank the joy so and more power to you keep growing and keep connected with us of course right here absolutely. at the mayo podcast absolutely absolutely yeah. <laughs> thank you so much shruti it has been it's a real pleasure right like you said there's nothing like connecting with the mayo you always feel like you've known them forever so true so true thank you for sharing all your insights with me and being such a gem and such a sweetheart for sharing all your your entire story with me so thank you so much thank you shruti ji have a lovely day This podcast is brought to you by Mayo Girls Alumni Association. If you're a Mayoite and wish to participate, email us on mayocollegegirlsalumni@gmail.com.